Hello and welcome to another episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at how we can use Adobe's new Flash Catalyst CS5 to create an interactive version of our city map. So let's go ahead and get started. I have the city map here open in Illustrator and while Illustrator is great for creating this, this fantastic vector design and vector work it doesn't really have the interactivity that I want. So I do just want to point out that I do have layers and kind of layer sets here. We have a navigation set of objects and we have the base design. And what I want to do is I want to convert this into an interactive map for my website. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop over to Flash Catalyst and in Flash Catalyst all I've done is I've just simply said import that Illustrator file just to save time. So as you can see, it comes in with the same exact layout, the same exact features. I can click on objects. I can move the objects around. I can do whatever I want. But now what I'd rather, really rather do is go ahead and start to make this interactive. So one of the things I kind of forgot to do was I want to create a, like a little text thing up here that kind of tells people to um, choose, a, choose a view option or choose an option to view. So we'll just go ahead and grab our text tool. We don't have to go back to Illustrator for this. We can drag out a text box. And I'm just going to go ahead and type choose a view. And let's make sure we got our C in there. There we go. Choose a view. I can highlight that. I get control over my text and fonts. So of course I have, you know, I work for Adobe, so I've got a lot of fonts here. Uh, let's go ahead and choose Chaparral Pro and we'll just go ahead and make that a little bit larger and you know what the thing about fonts is I'm never happy so let's have, let's try Euro style there we go so we've got our uh, we got our text in place the next thing I want to do is I kind of want to align these objects they really don't look that good kind of split up the way they are so I'll switch back to my selection tool we'll go ahead and shift select uh, our navigation objects here and we'll just go ahead and go up to my um, we'll go up to my modify menu, come down to a line, and we'll choose a line left. So now, just quickly and easily, I've aligned all four of, all four of those objects together. Now, each button here, I've already gone ahead and taken the liberty of converting it to a button. So in my um, heads-up display, all I did was select the Illustrator object and say convert to button, and so now they're ready to go as buttons, but they're not assigned to anything. So we're going to go ahead and create the interactivity and we even have the ability to round trip a button back to Illustrator. So for example, this button does have an overstate. And what I, what I can do, for example, is I can change the overstate for that button to have a drop shadow. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at that. I'm just going to right click on it. I'm going to say edit in Illustrator. That will round trip it to Illustrator, show me that view of the button. I can go ahead and zoom in on it, grab my direct selection tool, we'll select the uh, outline of this, and what I want to do now is just give it an effect. Actually, I don't want to do it on the up state. We'll turn off the up state, we'll turn on the over state, because that's the one I actually want to have the effect on. We'll go to effect, stylize, drop shadow, because you know, everything looks better with a drop shadow. Just kidding. All right, so we'll go ahead and uh, change the effect of that drop shadow make it not so fuzzy we'll click OK we'll click done inside of Flash Catalyst or I'm sorry inside of Illustrator it knows about Flash Catalyst so it will then round trip it updating it back inside of Flash Catalyst so when I go to my overstate for that button now that button now has the drop shadow okay so great we can round trip now let's actually make the buttons do something now you notice the first page I have already named City View. So we're just going to duplicate that page and that just gives an, us an exact copy of that page. We're, we're just going to change this one to Union. I believe it's Union Station. Uh, we'll call it Union for, or Union Station for now. I can't remember exactly what it is. Oh, it's Union Park. I'm looking at the button now. Union Park View. All right, so now that we're on the Union Park View page, this is the part where I want the map to zoom in to the Union Park area of the map. 
So how do we make that happen? Well, normally I would just start grabbing the handles and just really sizing this graphic up. But I've already gone ahead and kind of experimented and played around with the best settings to zoom this up. So I'm going to do it mathematically over here in the properties area. So I'm in the properties area. I'm just going to hit not negative 980 by negative 11. And what that will do is completely move the map off the page because it's now, you know, it's, it's still not any bigger. It's just moved. Now we'll go ahead and make it big enough so that we can actually see it. So 2057 for my width, 1199 for my height. And what that has done is just simply move the map over and zoomed in on Union Park. So we've got this page ready to go. So this is our city view, which is zoomed out, our Union Park view, which is zoomed in. Now we'll duplicate this state and we'll call this one our Central Park view. Okay, so we got the next new page and same thing. Now we're already zoomed in, so we just need to move it to where the Central Park view is. So again, I'll just do it mathematically. We'll give it an X coordinates of negative 680 and a Y coordinates of negative 591. And that will zoom it in or just move it over to the Central Park view. So now I've got Central Park, Union Park, and back to the standard city view. Now I want to make this interactive so a person can just click on the button to take them to the appropriate view. So let's go ahead and select our Union Park button. And it's already a button. Like I said, I already made it one in the heads up display. So now we'll just add some interactivity to it that says, uh, when they click on this button, play transition to state Union Park View. And this is another reason why you name your pages. It'll make life a lot easier. All right, so we'll click the next button. Same thing. Add an interaction. Play transition to state. Which state? Central Park View. So now each button, and we'll go ahead and, by the way, we'll do the one, same thing for the city view, which is our initial page. Uh, we'll go ahead and choose that to play. All right, so now what Flash Catalyst has done down here on my timeline is it's created for each transition going from page to page a move and a resize because it knows each page is different. However, I want that to kind of happen more smoothly. I don't want it to, um, I don't want it to, you know, blink or snap to that view. I want it to kind of pan over and zoom. So I'm just going to go ahead and select all of these transitions and with one click of one button, smooth transitions. It will make each one of those happen in half a second as opposed to instantly. So now let's go ahead and build this out. I'm just going to go up to, I can do it from the file menu. Uh, we can say, uh, let's see here, uh, run project, which is command enter on the Mac or control enter on the uh, PC. And that will build it out in the flash, open it up in my default browser, and let me test it to make sure it works. Okay, so here comes the file. Here are my rollovers, complete with the drop shadow. And now if I click Union Park View, it kind of zooms in. Great. Central Park View pans over. City View zooms back out. So there you have it. In just a few minutes' time, I've created an interactive map that is now ready to go on the web. If I needed a back-end programmer to do more to it, I can just hand it off um, from the Flash Catalyst file. They can open it up in Flash Builder and continue working on it. But for me, this is all I need. All I want to do is just simply make an interactive map for my website. So now at this point, I can go back to Flash Catalyst. If I was satisfied that this is all I needed, I can say File, Publish to Swift and or Air to make this a standalone file ready to go in my HTML page on my website and then put a link to it. So there you have it. That's it for this week's episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast, creating an interactive map, starting with an Illustrator file, front into Flash Catalyst, and then out to Flash for the web. Thanks for watching.